The times have definitely changed. What's up guys, I'm here at my channel Geek, where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you to my channel that's PC Tech, Games, and Gear. I'm reviewing this Aura Flow ID Cooling AIO. Now the reason for this video is at the time I bought this, it was basically the cheapest AIO I could find on Amazon. It was like $47 where the price unfortunately has gone up, but you can find a lot of 240 AIOs or all-in-one coolers for around $50 or potentially even less, which is nuts. Because for a very long time, water cooling loops like this were considered a premium option only for enthusiasts or those who had deep pockets to do so. And usually the reason that you did it was because you were trying to squeeze every bit of overclocking performance out of your CPU, or you are willing to pay the extra money because you wanted it to look aesthetically a certain way. Now I can already hear the air cooling fanboy saying, well, Andrew, I'm Andrew. There's realistically no difference between water cooling and air cooling, at least if you're using a good enough air cooler. And water coolers have way more points of failure, meaning they're not really as good of an option if you're talking about what's actually gonna be reliable. Technically that's true. Air coolers, especially really nice ones, like my UH-12 that I have on my current system right now, just as good as some of the best water coolers that you can buy. The difference is that AIOs have a much longer time in terms of reaching their max thermal temperature versus air cooling, which hits its maximum thermal temperature rather quickly, but then maintains that obviously once it reaches whatever that temperature might be. So why would you buy this then? Well, for me, it reaches three metrics. One, it's actually cheap. I got this for $47 before tax and for a decent air cooler, that's actually a really good price. Two, Aesthetically, air coolers can look great, but water coolers and AIOs, in my personal opinion, always look better. And a lot of people like to have a cooler setup or a more aesthetic setup when they're building their PC. I have a GPU backplate mod that I'm gonna be working on, and that big Noctua cooler is going to completely block it. So having this on here will actually allow me to a, see that mod that I'm going to be making. But in my experience, these are actually easier to swap out. And for a guy like me, in terms of not swapping out the whole cooler, but removing it off the CPU so I can swap CPUs for testing and things like that. So for an enthusiast, it's actually almost easier to have this than it is to have an air cooler just as far as like always having to take it off and put it back on. So without further ado, I'm going to hook this thing up and we're going to run some tests. So guys, getting this thing mounted was actually very easy, which I was pleasantly surprised by. Although the instructions are garbage, if you've never installed an AIO, you're gonna be a little bit confused as there's three pictures basically showing you what to do. Although I do think aesthetically, CPU cooler looks quite nice, um, matches my aesthetic very well. Now, the first thing I wanted to test was how loud these two coolers were, because as an audio file, not a huge one, but enough of one to where if it was really, really loud, it would definitely irritate me. Even though I have my earbuds in, that was the first thing I wanna test, so here's that for you. Now with the AIO, the reason I physically stopped those two fans is I wanted you to hear just how loud the AIO fans were by themselves, which under idle, they're pretty dang quiet. But under load or gaming, they are gonna get louder. That is to be expected. And quite honestly, it wasn't any worse than other AIOs that I've dealt with in the past. So there is that. Now, in terms of thermals, I put these guys under Prime 95 for about an hour. And surprisingly, the AIO kind of lost out. It was about four to five degrees hotter than what my actual Noctua cooler was getting. Now, I can't uh, chalk this up to whether or not it's TDP is better with the Noctua cooler uh, or the engineering on it is simply better in terms of the, its ability to heat transfer under heavier thermals. But it is something to consider because if you are gonna be doing you know, very, very heavy CPU loads over a long period of time, this cooler may not be the one for you. However, the majority of us are gonna be doing gaming or light editing where, you know, it's not gonna be under a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of heat or a lot of load for a long period of time. And so those results were actually more promising. In all my gaming tests that I ran, and I did game for about an hour and a half, so I don't know if we reached uh, thermal saturation on the AIO or not, but the AIO never honestly broke about 67 degrees Celsius. Like it didn't matter how long I was playing, what game I was playing, 
uh, that's basically where it sat where my Noctua cooler was getting 76 77 degrees you know a max thermal temperature so uh, if you are a gamer or you're somebody who's going to be doing light loads light video editing things like that this might be a great budget option if you're looking for an AIO simply from the standpoint that it is going to cool more efficiently under these type of workloads at least in the test that I was running so what are my final thoughts on this I think that AIO technology in general has come really far remember this used to be a premium option where you would not be able to get an AIO for quite honestly less than $100 no matter what the brand or even for like a single 120 rad the one thing you always want to watch out for is the warranty on any of these because obviously if the pump goes bad that will happen over time and the warranty I was able to find on this guy it's not fantastic but you know what this is a less well-known company so I wasn't shocked at all by that versus things something like Corsair or NZXT so anyway guys I think this AIO and AOs like it are honestly a safe bet nowadays like I said the technology has gotten far better but if you enjoyed this video leave me a thumbs up if you thought it was terrible leave me a thumbs down remember to get subscribed and hit that bell icon so you know when these videos drop next and uh, you know as always guys I'm gonna continue to make these videos whether you watch them or not but I hope you do and I hope to see every single one of you next time here on Gear Dink.